One more illustrated example problem before I cut you loose on some exercises. As a practical example of parallel impedance calculations, compare and contrast an ideal capacitor with a real one. An ideal capacitor is entirely capacitive in nature and has no leakage resistance. A real capacitor, in contrast, is only primarily capacitive in nature and has a large leakage resistance that oftentimes needs to be accounted for. Consider a 0.62 microfarad capacitor with a large leakage resistance, Rx, of let's say 10 kilo ohms. We're being asked to solve for the total impedance of this non-ideal capacitor at a frequency of 1.2 kilohertz, or 1,200 hertz. One can visualize the non-ideal capacitor as the capacitive portion and the leakage resistive portion in parallel with one another. The leakage resistive portion is a complex impedance of 10 kilo ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Substituting our given values into the capacitive complex impedance formula, we find the capacitive portion to be an impedance of 213.9 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Calculating the total impedance of the parallel resistive capacitive contributions, we found this non-ideal capacitor to present an impedance of 213.9 ohms at an angle of negative 88.8 degrees. Given negative 88.8 degrees is super close to negative 90 degrees, this non-ideal capacitor is still primarily capacitive. However, the angle shows it's slightly out of whack and not perfectly vertical anymore. Importantly, one must remember that the resistive and capacitive portions of this non-ideal capacitor are entirely inseparable, meaning the whole capacitor always represents a complex impedance of 213.9 ohms at an angle of negative 88.8 degrees at 1.2 kilohertz. As an application of this principle, consider the same non-ideal capacitor with an impedance of 213.9 ohms at an angle of negative 88.8 degrees in a parallel relationship with a 270 ohm resistor and a 16 millihenry inductor. The 270 ohm resistor is an impedance of 270 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. Substituting our given values into the inductive impedance equation, we find the 16 millihenry inductor at 1.2 kilohertz to be an impedance of roughly 120.6 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. As previously demonstrated, the complex impedance of the non-ideal capacitor is roughly 213.9 ohms at an angle of negative 88.8 degrees. When we calculate the total impedance of the parallel combination of ZR, ZL, and their non-ideal capacitor, we arrive at an impedance of roughly 190.6 ohms at an angle of 43.5 degrees. Given the large magnitude of the leakage resistor in parallel with a non-ideal capacitor, its influence is relatively inconsequential. However, its influence can still be calculated. Really, the only time this becomes an issue is for old or poorly manufactured capacitors with smaller leakage paths in parallel. All right, that's about enough preliminary discussion about parallel complex impedance. Let's put your understanding of parallel complex impedance calculations to the test with this example set. Given these parallel circuits, calculate the resultant total impedance. Remember, direction matters and one must calculate complex impedance for reactive elements like capacitors and inductors at the frequency of interest. Really, the only way to get this wrong is to fail to take into account direction or forget to perform complex impedance calculations. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Unless explicitly stated otherwise, like in problem three, you can assume all capacitors are ideal and possess no leakage path in parallel. Express all your answers using proper engineering format and express the complex impedance using polar format including magnitude and direction. For your tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, we're given a parallel relationship of a 180 ohm resistor and a 24 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 50 hertz. The resistor is an impedance of 180 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. The capacitor is an impedance of 132.6 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Calculating the total impedance using the quick and dirty method for two impedances in parallel, we arrive at a total impedance of 106.8 ohms at an angle of negative 53.6 degrees. For our second example problem, we've been given a parallel relationship of a 470 ohm resistor, a 67 millihenry inductor, and a 0.12 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 1.5 kilohertz or 1,500 hertz. The resistor is an impedance of 470 ohms at an angle of zero degrees. The inductor is an impedance of 631.5 ohms 
at an angle of positive 90 degrees, when the capacitor is an impedance of 884.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Calculating the total impedance using the more involved method for two or more impedances in parallel, we arrive at a total impedance value of 459.7 ohms at an angle of positive 12 degrees. The third example problem makes use of a non-ideal capacitor with only one kilo ohm of leakage resistance. With such a small leakage resistance path in parallel, this is meant to represent a poorly manufactured capacitor or one that is reaching the end of its lifespan. At this excitation frequency, the non-ideal capacitor is an impedance of roughly 174.1 ohms at an angle of negative 80 degrees. This non-ideal capacitor is in parallel with a 200 ohm resistor. The resistor is an impedance of 200 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Calculating the total impedance using the quick and dirty method for two impedances in parallel, we arrive at a value of 121.3 ohms at an angle of negative 43.3 degrees. Additionally, one could perform this calculation in one step using the more involved method for two or more impedances in parallel with a leakage resistor inherent to the non-ideal capacitor is simply idealized as yet another path in parallel. Doing so yields a total impedance of 121.3 ohms at an angle of negative 43.3 degrees as previously. Finally, for our fourth example problem, we've been given a parallel relationship of a 3.9 microfarad capacitor, a 62 millihenry inductor, a 750 ohm resistor, and a 100 millihenry inductor at an excitation frequency of 200 hertz. The capacitor has an impedance of roughly 204.0 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. The first inductor is an impedance of 77.9 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. The resistor is an impedance of 750 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. And finally, the second inductor is an impedance of 125.7 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Calculating the total impedance using the more involved method for two or more impedances in parallel, we arrive at a total impedance value of 62.7 ohms at an angle of positive 85.2 degrees. All right, hope you did well on that example set. You may wish to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made because we are moving on. Let's close out this lecture with a quick discussion of shorts and opens inside parallel AC circuits. Recall from our earlier discussion on shorts and opens inside parallel DC circuits that shorts and opens can dramatically alter the total resistance of that parallel relationship. Parallel AC circuits behave no differently, only the terminology is subtly altered. Take the term resistance and swap it out for the term impedance and you get the picture. A short is a path with zero ohms impedance through which substantial current will flow. No voltage will be dropped across a short. In contrast, an open is a path with infinite impedance through which no current can flow. All voltage will be dropped across an open. Let's examine the influence of shorts and parallel circuits first. Consider a parallel relationship of 160 ohm resistor, 180 millihenry inductor, and a 27 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 50 hertz. The resistor is an impedance of 160 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The inductor is an impedance of 56.5 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. The capacitor is an impedance of 117.9 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Ordinarily, when connected in the following fashion, this parallel relationship would represent a total impedance of roughly 89.9 ohms at an angle of positive 55.8 degrees. If, however, a short in the form of a zero ohm resistive wire was placed across the terminals of the parallel relationship, or any single element within this relationship, note the short effectively acts like the addition of yet another path in parallel, only this time being one with zero ohm impedance magnitude. As such, the total impedance of the shorted parallel relationship drops to zero ohms because the short routes all current around the parallel relationship. In summary, shorts and parallel circuits totally wreck that parallel circuit no matter where the short occurs. Impedance in shorted parallel circuits immediately drops to zero ohms. Now let's examine the influence of opens in parallel circuits. Opens in parallel circuits necessitate a bit more examination because where the open occurs can dramatically alter the behavior of the total parallel arrangement. Consider an open in the form of a broken wire on the terminals of the capacitor. This effectively removes the capacitor from consideration given current entering the top node wouldn't travel through the capacitor. As such, this parallel relationship is now only composed of just the remaining resistor and inductor. 
When these two remaining elements are combined in parallel, the total impedance value is 53.3 ohms at an angle of 70.5 degrees. As can be expected, this modified parallel circuit with an open capacitor seems to shift towards the inductive end of the spectrum given it contains none of the moderating capacitive influence as previously. Not only has the nature of total impedance shifted towards the inductive end of the spectrum, note it has also changed in magnitude. Note since this parallel arrangement including an open consists of only two active elements, one could also use the quick and dirty calculation method to arrive at the same result. In summary, opened elements in parallel circuits totally remove that single open element from consideration and the total impedance is solely dependent upon those remaining elements that comprise it. Opens can also occur in other places with far more dramatic consequences. Consider an open at the top node. While the three elements may still be in parallel, there is no path and as a result, no current can flow. An open in this location is like adding an infinite resistance in front of or in series with our intended parallel arrangement. Infinite impedance effectively renders this path useless as a means of carrying current, and as a result, the impedance of this open parallel arrangement is infinite. Let's put your understanding of parallel impedance calculations, including shorts and open, to the test with this example problem. Given this parallel circuit at a frequency of 100 Hz, calculate the result in total impedance given ordinary conditions, the inclusion of a short at the following location, and an inclusion of an open at the following location. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Express all your final answers using proper engineering format and polar format with a magnitude and direction. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The resistor represents an impedance of 300 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees, and the capacitor represents an impedance of 370.1 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Ideally, the total impedance of this parallel relationship is 233.1 ohms at an angle of negative 39 degrees. If, however, we included a short across the terminals of the capacitor, the impedance of the whole parallel arrangement would drop to zero ohms, since all current will be routed through the short and around the parallel arrangement. Finally, if an open occurred such that one terminal of the resistor is dangling out into space, no current can flow through the resistor and only the capacitor remains in the circuit. As such, the total impedance of this parallel arrangement, including an open resistor, is only representative of the capacitor being the only path through which current can flow. Impedance would be 370.1 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. All right, that's about it for our discussion of parallel complex impedances. In conclusion, this lecture examined parallel complex impedances. We learned to calculate the total impedance of parallel or side-by-side -side complex impedances using both the quick and dirty method for two impedances only and the more involved method for two or more impedances. We learned that one must always account for direction when calculating parallel impedance. Additionally, we examine the effects of shorts and opens in parallel relationships. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.